In this video, we're going to talk about theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is what should happen according to math, right? So what should happen according to math? So take a look at this spinner. If I have this spinner, I have four equal sections, all with different colors. And if I want to find out what is the probability that this will land on orange, what I need to do is I need to actually see how many favorable outcomes there are. Well, there's only one that's orange. And since there's only one that's orange, if I was to spin it, there's four total sections. So according to math, there's a 25% chance that this spinner, once I spin it, will land on orange. Now, sometimes it happens and sometimes it don't. Okay, and we'll get into that, which is called experimental probability in a later video. Now, take a look at this. Okay, so with this spinner right here, let's talk about the probability of this spinner landing on a number that's greater than one. So theoretically, according to math, how many sections are there labeled um, that's greater than, I'm sorry, that's greater than two? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven possible outcomes that's greater than two. Actually, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. If we want to find out what the probability is of this spinner landing on an outcome that's greater than two, let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five, six. There are six possible outcomes that's greater than two. And you always want to put your total as your denominator. So greater than two is six out of the eight different outcomes. I can also simplify this by dividing by the greatest common factor of two and get three fourths. So there is a three out of four or six out of eight chance that it will land on probability of landing on something greater than two. Okay. What about this one? So with this one, I would like to know the probability of landing on the letter A. Well, how many letter A's do you see? Well, there's one here and there's one here. So there's two out of, I need to find my total. But if I split this in half, I see that there's one, two, three, four, five on this half. So that means there's five on this half, which is two tenths, which is equivalent to 20%. This is theoretically what the math is telling us. Now, if you take a look at this, I can go even further. So if there's a two out of 10 chance that it will land on the letter A, well, what happens after 300 spins? Okay, well, let's see. Okay, after 300 spins, let's figure out how many are we expected um, to land on the letter A. Now, this is where knowing proportions come in handy. In order to solve this, I can cross multiply or I can just use multiplication. 10 times X is 10X, and that's the same as 2 times 300. Okay, you have to pull out what you know about uh, solving proportions. 2 times 300 is 600. Now, to isolate this X, I divide both the left side and the right side by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1, so I'm left with X. Now, when it comes to this, I can simplify by getting rid of these two zeros here. And I'll be left with 60 divided by 1. Right? And 60 divided by 1 is just simply 60. Oh, so let's take a look at this last one. Okay, this is theoretical probability, what the math says. So now I have this 10-sided solid, and the faces are labeled 1 through 12. Now, you don't see them, but they are actually, let's pretend like they're number 1 through 12. What is the probability that you will land on a number greater than 5? Well, if I had 1 through 12... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. How many do you see that's greater than 5? Now, sometimes they say 5 or greater, but I want greater than 5, which are these right here. 
So if I take a look at these, and the ones that's greater than five, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different outcomes out of a total of 12 faces, okay? Now, if the solid is rolled 180 times, how many times would you expect either a three, nine, or 11? Well, that's three different options when you talk about a three, nine, or 11. So that's three different options out of the 12 original. Now, if I wanna go 180 times, I'm gonna set this one up like a proportion as well. Okay, now you can take it one step further and you can use cross multiplication or I, I want to simplify 3 twelfths to 1 fourth. That's going to make my math a little bit easier for me. Okay, and if you don't see that right away, it's okay. You can still go ahead and use cross multiplication and get the same answer. 4 times x is the same as 1 times 80. 1 times 180 which will give me 4x is equal to 180, all right? So with this, what I want to do is I want to divide the left side by 4 and the right side by 4 because I want to isolate this variable, which is x. So x is left, is left um, and I need to do 4 divided into 180, okay? And 4 goes into 180 if you do the division here for groups that equals 16, bring it down. That will be 45 times. That will be the outcome. Okay, that's what I expect. Now, when we go into the next video talking about experimental probability, you'll find out that that does not occur all the time. Theoretical probability is what should happen according to the math. And in this video, we talked about different ways to determine theoretical probability.